Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Thomas Moodley. Good morning, Indiana. You guys look really, really cold. Um, but I see a lot of smiles, so that makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, I won't tell you that we have heaters up here. So, um, Governor Holcomb, Mrs. Donnelly, Ms. Truitt, Ms. Colonna, see you in the front row there. Distinguished guests and city citizens of Indianapolis and the state of Indiana, thank you for the introduction, and it's my honor to be with you here today as we commission this ship into service. I would like to send my regards to my classmate, Naval Academy Superintendent Sean Buck, who's a native of Indianapolis, uh, three-star admiral. He's now the superintendent at the Naval Academy. He's followed this ship through its entire course from its keel laying till now, and he really wanted to be here today, but uh, he couldn't be here. Uh, but I do uh, want to say that uh, he has some important duties in Annapolis today. There's a big football game. Um, so he's taking care of those things, and hopefully we'll get a win. Um, I'm especially excited to be here today because of my own personal connection to this ship class. As some of you may know, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, just down the road from here. So with each LCS ship that we commission here today, like the one here today, it's one ship closer to the commissioning of LCS 31, the USS Cleveland. Um, and so as it is for you today here in Portage and in Burns Harbor, that commissioning will be an absolutely incredible day for the city of Cleveland and the entire state of Ohio. So it's really a great privilege for me to be here and be part of this event with you as we share a common sense of Midwestern civic pride. Now, in all likelihood, uh, there's very little chance that I will be the Under Secretary of the Navy when the USS Cleveland gets commissioned in about three years. So if you don't mind, I'm going to encroach a little bit on some of your Indiana pride today uh, from this dais and hopefully give you a th few things to think about so that this day doesn't fade into your memories too quickly after your ship sets sail from here to fulfill its mission. Now, every time we commission a ship into service, we initiate a journey that unfolds into our shared history. I thought about how best I could capture that today, uh, given the limited amount of time I have. And so I decided to channel one of Indiana's most famous and well-regarded native sons to help me organize my thoughts. Uh, and that native son is, of course, uh, Mr. David Letterman. So with all respect, and apologies for any copyright infringements to Mr. Letterman. Here's today's top 10 list. The top 10 things I hope you remember about the commissioning of the USS Indianapolis LCS 17. Number 10, the crossroads of America. As most of you know, this is the motto of the state of Indiana. It was first adopted in 1937, and it was originally the nickname of the city of Indianapolis. The crossroads of America signifies the importance of waterways, railroads, highways, and other transportation facilities in this state, which have been viewed by many over the course of history as being the finest in the nation. But it's about more than infrastructure. It's about the state and how it facilitates connection of Hoosiers to other Americans and other people all around the world. An important part of this ship's mission will be to do the same, to connect our Navy in our nation to our allies, partners, friends, and potentially more friends across the globe. And as government, Gov Governor Holcomb is dedicated to bringing the world to Indiana and Indiana to the world, this ship will be part of that mission. It's what navies do around the world. Number nine, Great Lakes. This ship is of a very, very unique class of ships with great significance for this region of the country. This is the only warship that's built on the Great Lakes. She was built in Marinette, Wisconsin, as you heard, but parts of her were manufactured from all over this region, including the steel that make the hull, which is manufactured here. She steamed here through Lake Michigan and will proceed through Lake Huron, Lake Erie, and Ontario on her way to the sea. As long as she is commissioned in service, she will connect this region to the sea and to the nations that rely on the sea for their way of life. Number eight, your Navy. This ship will join a naval force of 290 ships and about 335,000 sailors. That force is at sea every single day, across all corners of the globe, protecting the vital sea lanes and deterring those 
who wish to do us harm or who, who want to pursue their own interests with disregard for international standards and norms. Be proud of this Navy. This is your Navy. They protect you, but they also belong to you. Number seven, your ship. LCS-17 is your ship. You heard a little bit about some of her statistics. Her length is 387.6 feet. Her beam is 57.7 feet. Her displacement, about 3,500 3, metric tons. Her draft, 14 feet. But here's the best part. Her speed, 40 plus knots. Now, that's not quite the speed that you'd see at the International Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but I'm telling you, for a ship, that's really fast. And it's going to give this ship incredible capabilities uh, and some incredible advantages in the waterways close to shore where some of our more traditional ships cannot go. Number six, your crew. John Paul Jones once said that men mean more than guns in the rating of a ship. This is and always will be true with one minor exception. The men and women who make up this crew are the ones who mean more than the guns. They are the ones who will breathe life into this ship. The commanding officer, Commander Kane, Commander Kane is from the great Midwestern state of Ohio. Ohio, that's right, right, that's right. I'm from Cleveland, you know, so. The crew members hail from 23 other states, including two U.S. territories, namely the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Ohio, North Carolina, South Carolina, California, New York, Pennsylvania, New Mexico, Iowa, Georgia, Virginia, Michigan, and Florida. One crew member is a dual citizen of Spain and the United States with an American father who served in the Navy and rode to Spain. Pray for this crew. They will carry the name of Indianapolis and Indiana all over the world in defense of our way of life. Number five, SS Indianapolis. You heard a little bit about her already. She was the first ship to bear this name. She was a support ship, and in 1918, she was fully commissioned and became the first USS Indianapolis. And in World, just after World War I, she delivered vital supplies to a war-torn region of Europe, but she was out of service by 1919. But during that year of service, she made her mark in helping to end and secure stability in one of the greatest conflicts the world had seen. Number four. CA-35. CA-35, or Heavy Cruiser 35, was the second ship to be named the USS Indianapolis. She was commissioned in 1932. She served as Admiral Spruance's command flagship during most of World War II, and she fought with distinction. We heard about her tragedy. 316 men out of the crew of 1,196 were rescued. Her story of historic triumph and catastrophe is one of the great tragic ironies of the war and one of the most noteworthy ones in U.S. naval history. Number three, SSN 697. SSN 697 is the third ship to be named the USS Indianapolis. She was commissioned in 1980 at the height of the Cold War. She sailed in commissioned service for 18 years. Her crew served with distinction, earning battle efficiencies and unit accommodations and she helped deter Soviet aggression. When she was commissioned, many survivors of CA-35 were actually present for the official ceremony. And when she was decommissioned, her sail was dedicated as a memorial right here in Indiana at the Military Museum in Vincennes. Number two, I know you're all shivering. I got only two more to go, so stick with me. Number two, legacy. The three previous ships named for Indianapolis leave a powerful legacy for the ship you see along the pier today. All three of these ships participated in seminal events that turned the tide of human history for the good. The SS Indianapolis, a commissioned cargo ship that supplied our troops and the citizens of Europe after World War I, a war that we thought would end all wars. CA-35, a heavy cruiser that delivered a weapon that actually did end a war a war that we all pray we will never have to experience again. And SSN 697, a fast attack submarine that kept her a horrific war from ever happening. The crew of this ship will be forever tied to the crews of those three other ships that bore the name Indianapolis. And so will the people of Indianapolis and the entire state of Indiana. Their legacy is worth remembering 
and honoring for eternity because what they did in no small measure made this day possible for all of us. So let's review the top 10 list. Number 10, Crossroads of America. Number nine, Great Lakes. Number eight, your Navy. Number seven, your ship. Number six, your crew. Number five, SS Indianapolis. Number four, CA-35. Number three, SS-697. Number two, Legacy. And finally, number one, the number one thing you should remember about the commissioning of LCS-17 is freedom. LCS-17 is one of a class of littoral combat ships that is appropriately named the Freedom Class. It is what she represents and is what she will fight to defend. But more importantly, she will play a critical role in inspiring others around the world who seek freedom because every person on this crew and this ship who comes in contact, every person around the world who comes in contact with this crew and this ship will know what freedom produces. I had the occasion this week to attend a celebration hosted by the Hungarian Embassy in Washington to commemorate the historic, two historic events in Hungarian history, the Hungarian Revolution in 1956 and the 30th anniversary of the formal, peaceful rejection of Soviet-backed communism. At this event, I spoke about my first trip back to Hungary with my father, who was escaped in 1948. In 1970, I returned with him, and at that time, under Soviet control, the Hungarian Parliament Building, one of the most ornate and beautiful buildings in all of Europe, had on top of it, affixed to its tallest spire, a one and a half ton red communist star. It was a stark reminder of how ideology devised by man and imposed from above is incongruent with human nature's creativity and quest for freedom. I returned to Hungary a few years ago, and that star was gone, as were all the vestiges of Stalinism and communist rule. And as I was walking through the streets of Budapest with my eyes affixed on that same parliament building, I nearly stumbled into a bronze statue that seemed to be part of a street scene, except it was a bronze statue. It was a statue of Ronald Reagan. He was not on a huge pedestal on top of some big ornate building, but rather there on the sidewalk where the people walk. It stands as a monument to the fact that people do not look to the sky for symbols to govern their lives. They look to the sky in faith and in prayer, and they look to nations like ours and people like us to inspire their innate quest for freedom. Allow me to cite one more adopted native son of Indiana, although I know a couple other states have claimed him, like Kentucky and Illinois. But as you all know, many know, Abraham Lincoln did spend some formative years here in Indiana as a young boy. And on this topic of freedom and the struggle to preserve it, perhaps no one was more elegant, elo eloquent than President Lincoln. He said, our defense is in the preservation of the spirit which prizes liberty as a heritage of all men, in all lands, everywhere. Destroy this spirit, and you have planted the seeds of despotism around your own doors. The USS Indianapolis will leave these shores soon to defend this nation as she was designed to do. But more importantly, she will connect this city, this state, and the spirit of our country, a spirit that prizes freedom, just as Hoosier Abraham Lincoln said, as the heritage of all men in all lands that touch the sea and beyond. Thank you for being here to share in this moment. God bless this ship and its crew and all of our sailors, Marines, soldiers, Coast Guardsmen who go into harm's way every single day to keep us safe and free. Go Navy, go Indianapolis, go Indiana, and of course, as always, beat Army. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary.